Hello, this is Joe Polish, president of Piranha Marketing and founder of the Genius Network interview series, and you're about to hear one of my Genius Network interviews, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this, and I hope you find it very useful. If you want to find out more information about some of the interviews and resources that can help you in your business, you can go to www.joepolish.com. And we have a Joe Polish Recommends section with all kinds of resources and vendors and services and products that we recommend that can help you in your business. And also for more useful interviews and a whole list of other people that I've interviewed, you can go to www.geniusnetwork.com. Thanks and enjoy the interview. This is Joe Polish, president of Piranha Marketing and founder of the Genius Network interview series. And today I'm going to interview a very bright guy which I guarantee is going to expand uh, your thinking when you uh, listen to uh, me talk to Mr. Dave Kekich. What I do want to do is a request that I typically don't make before one of my interviews, which is there's something that Dave wrote called Kekich's Credo. And there are 100 uh, basically rules of life and business suggestions. I kind of look at them as success secrets that Dave wrote over a 25-year-plus period. And included with the Genius Network interview, if you are a subscriber, you have been uh, given a transcript and you have been given the uh, credos. Um, if you do not have the credos on you, you can go to GeniusNetwork.com and download them, uh, Kekich credos. What I would like you to do before you listen to the rest of this interview, if possible, uh, is to read all of them uh, first. It will just take you a few minutes, but if you were to read the credos in advance of listening to me talk to Dave, I think you'll have a much different insight of this individual, who he is, and how brilliant uh, he is, and I think you'll find it extraordinarily valuable. So having said that, now let me join Dave. Dave, can you hear me okay? I sure can, Joe. Wonderful. Now, you're in Los Angeles right now. I'm in Tempe, Arizona, and I imagine you're staring at the beach? Uh, actually, no. I am um, I sold my house, and I can't see the beach anymore, and I'm building a new one where I will be able to see the beach, but right now I'm staring at a uh, swimming pool. Oh, that's exciting. First off, let me say to all the listeners, uh, many people that uh, are clients of mine, have been around me for any length of time, have heard your name uh, a zillion times. You've uh, luckily, have, uh, for me, have come to a couple of my boot camps, and uh, we've been very good friends for several years. Uh, it's been a, a, quite a while, several years since the last time I interviewed you, and when I did interview you for the first time, which actually is when we really started developing our relationship, our friendship, I had so much positive feedback, and since that time I've distributed something that you wrote over a 25-year period called Kekich Credos. Now, for the listeners, Dave, I'm just going to do the general bio stuff and uh, just read a short blurb of who you are, and then I'll ask you some questions. So let me uh, let me say a few things. About who is Dave Kekich, spelled K E K I C H. Mr. Kekich founded the country's largest life insurance master general agency, which raised $3.1 billion of premium income for First Executive Corp., co founded a major financial services company, and arranged venture capital funding for private companies for 11 years. He's a recognized expert on private investing and authored the Venture Capital Handbook How the Rich Get Richer with Quiet Private Investments. Mr. Kekich founded both public and private companies, was engaged as a consultant and served as director to numerous private and public corporations. He also sold and developed real estate. In 1999, Mr. Kekich founded the Maximum Life Foundation, a 501c3 corporation dedicated to curing aging-related diseases. He serves as a board member of the American Aging Association. Uh, Dave, is there anything that I left out about you that is important for listeners to know before I launch into some questions for you? No, Joe, I don't think so. I think you covered it pretty well. Okay, good. Well, let me say this and preface this uh, because, you know, I mean, I know, Dave, you don't, you, you never bring this up unless someone asks. I always think it's a good perspective thing for my listeners to be aware of. Uh, you wrote uh, what I believe are some of the most impactful uh, business and life lessons, uh, however you want to refer to them, called Kekich Credos. There's a hundred of them that I have uh, distributed for many years, uh, shared with uh, thousands of people. Um, there's more wisdom in those hundred credos than probably all the books that I have read, if you were to just take quantity and versus quality of writing. And you wrote these over a 25-year period after, I believe, you were 35 years old. You had a uh, spinal injury that has left you paralyzed from the uh, chest down, and you've been in a wheelchair for that period of time. And in spite of that, you've uh, made millions of dollars. You're one of the most enthusiastic people that I've ever met. You're you're a brilliant guy. You've impacted many, many people in such a positive way. And I know your goals and your missions is to uh, 
change uh, a lot of uh, you know just aging and in the world in a more positive way. So can we just get a little bit of background on the credos? Because I'd like to talk uh, about that. And, you know, this is our second interview. And the first, I don't even remember how many years ago that was. It was uh, several years ago. Gosh, I don't but, either, Joe. It's been a while. Yeah, it was a great interview. And anyone that, you know, would like to hear the original interview, you can go to GeniusNetwork.com. We have that available still. People still love it to this day. I hear constantly, you know, what a great interview. Well, what have you been up to since that time? Well, quite a bit, Joe. I've been focusing almost all my efforts on the uh, on Maximum Life Foundation, and um, all of those efforts are geared toward extending the quality and the quantity of uh, of our lives. And that's been a real challenge to me, and it's something that's a passion for me, and it's something that I've been just focusing on almost 100%. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I've been involved in conferences that you've been at, uh, where I've been invited to, and you know, some uh, amazingly interesting people. So, well, what I do want to do is kind of start with some of the the credos, and then I'd like to ask you about Maximum Life Foundation and just some of your philosophies and things on on aging and in life and and all that good stuff. What are the credos? Why did you write them? Give the listeners a little bit of background on you know maybe uh, some of the things that prompted it from your your injury and how that you know, has affected your life and what ended up becoming the result of you uh, becoming the guy you are today? Well, the credos were actually written for me personally. I had a couple of uh, financial reversals. One of them was my injury. A lot of things stemmed from that, but I had a real bad experience with a, um, a former business partner, and I um, put myself in the, in the position to be had, I guess. And I did that because my I, I was very weak emotionally. I had a bad attitude after I got hurt. I went from a Oh, a hard-charging, uh, up-and-coming entrepreneur, long-distance runner, weightlifting fanatic, to um, a paraplegic in a twinkling of an eye. Okay, wait, Dave, can I mention this too, just as a background? I mean, you're, you're in phenomenal shape right now, and you work out literally almost daily. I mean, you're in great shape, and you look fantastic, and you're in a wheelchair, and you're paralyzed from the, the chest down. How old are you at the time that we're doing this interview right now? Well, I'll be 63 next month. Okay, so I just want to have everyone get perspective on that because when you were a fitness fanatic that was in the 70s where it wasn't anywhere near as prevalent as it is today no it wasn't in fact when i started running uh it was rare to see anybody on the same track or on the same route that i was running on uh now it's commonplace everybody's all over the place running skateboarding uh, rollerblading yeah, and I, and I want and I want the listeners to be aware of that because so much of what where your focus is is on health and on longevity, and this is coming from an individual that you know this was always part of your lifestyle, and you know, and you had uh, in many cases what many people would consider uh, you know a horrendous event happen where you became a paraplegic, and so I just wanted to I just want to get some perspective here. Oh, it was a horrible event. I I thought I lost everything I had. I thought I lost uh, everything that made life worthwhile. And as it turned out, I lost a lot, but uh, certainly not everything. And, and, and we'll, we'll get all these things back one of these days. Uh, well, what caused you to write the credos then? I had a, um, a couple of bad business experiences, and I uh, kind of got hustled pretty badly by a pretty sharp, let's call him a con man. And years went by, and I had a hard time recovering from that emotionally because it was it went hand-in-hand hand with my injury time-wise. And uh, it actually it happened right after I got hurt. And it happened again to me years later. And the person that got me the second time wasn't nearly as sharp. Um, I was just a little bit, I guess, weak, um, psychologically weak, you might say, dependent on other people, and I kind of fell into a trap. And after I um, got realized I had gotten stung financially, I sat back and tried to analyze what happened. I thought I was smarter than that because I basically repeated a mistake. And he got me for what little I had left over. I lost basically everything I had. Uh, due to my injury or after my injury, and I started writing down all the things that I thought went wrong, all the things that I thought I should have known that might have kept those things from happening, and I ended up just writing all the lessons, the hard lessons and the soft lessons I learned in life, all the wisdom that I had uh, extracted from other people, from mentors, from uh, business associates, friends, people that I've read about, books that I'd read and so forth, and I came up with uh, 100 points, which I called Kekich's Credo, and this was something that I just wrote for myself. I didn't write it to be published or to share with anyone. It ended up getting in your hands, and, and I'm, I'm glad it did because a lot of people came back and said that it had helped them in a number of ways. And any way I can get anything to help anybody else, I'd, I'd be more than happy to do because 
I know I went through a lot of pain, and uh, these credos got me uh, out of that pain. Uh, and they evolved over time. My first draft took me uh, several days to write, and then over the years I kept updating them and combining them and adding new ones and so forth. But uh, I ended up with something that I really hadn't edited uh, at least more than superficially for the last couple of years. Well, and, I mean, we've had numerous conversations about this. I mean, for a period of time, uh, we have, you know, worked on a book project that we now, because of this interview, which is one of the main things, uh, you know, we recently had a conversation about, yeah, we're going we're going to finish the book. It's, it's the powerful. Unpublished, the unpublished book. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I mean, I actually read these credos. They were, uh, I read about them originally in a Gary Halbert newsletter. Because yeah. you, you didn't know Gary in person, he had like somehow come across them. He probably had, had read your book, and just thought, "Wow, these are some of the most amazing things I'd ever seen." And I, I just I read them, and I was like, "Wow, they, these, this is really really good stuff." And just to give you some background, uh, I don't know to what degree you know this, but uh, back in 1996, when uh, Bill Phillips, uh, who you know, Body for Life author, and he's been a client of mine for uh, many years. Um, he actually, uh, you know, I was doing some consulting with him, and I had faxed over a copy of your credos. And at the time, his company was doing about $60 million a year in revenue. And within a three-year period, he had built that up to uh, right around $200 million. And he, you know, 1999 sold the company for many, many hundreds of millions of dollars. And, you know, he, he liked your credos so much that he printed them up, put them in frames, uh, broke them you know, up into, you know, different chunks and put them all over the upstairs building at EAS, which was a very big building. And he would publish them in his magazine, Muscle Media. And, you know, he just used them as kind of a, a compass in a lot of ways to keep his thinking in line. And I know that many people have done that, too. I've actually printed the credos up, and I, I've told people read them, you know, every day for like seven days straight and at least read them, uh, you know, every day for a week for like a month period. And everyone that I've ever told to do that, too, they always give me feedback of enormous insight a lot of a uh, lot of focus and what it does for them and everyone listening to this interview will be provided through uh, you know if they are a subscriber to Genius Network with uh, access online to uh, the, the the hundred credos and uh, most of my subscribers ha- at some point or another have read them because I've talked about them for years and and I really I, I've said this over and over again that out of, out of all the books that I've ever read if I was just to take one thing that I could could only read and use as Guidance, reminders, um, you know, motivation, inspiration, a way to check in with what's important, what's not important. These hundred uh, credos would definitely be the top of the list. I mean, they're they're that powerful. And so, I, I mean, there's no way during this interview we'd be able to, you know, go through every one of them. And but I do want to talk about a few of them and just ask you to elaborate on it. And, I, and what I'd like to do is just pick a few, read them, and then ask you to. Um, to just give your thoughts on sure, what... So, well, well, thank you for your great compliment and your uh, your testimony. Um, I, I had no idea Bill had uh, Bill Phillips had um, used the, the credos to that extent. I, I do know he, you mentioned before that he'd read them, and had, I know I saw them, he published one or two or three of them, I think I saw in, in Muscle Media, but um, I had no idea that he'd gone to that extent. But I... Uh, now that I know that, I take all the credit for his success, and I, I would like to get a small finder's fee. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I've introduced you to Bill since that time too, and he's always, he's always admired you for that. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to hit him up on that. Also, you know, another one of Bill's friends, uh, the the football player Bill Romanowski, uh, was in my office uh, a couple weeks ago because he works with um, one of my tenants, a uh, real real bright uh, sports scientist named Tom Inkledon, just great guy. And I had given him a, a copy of the credos, and he had read them, and he's like, wow, these things are awesome. And they are. I mean, anyone that has – I mean, there's not a business person or entrepreneur, I think, or alive that uh, – not that they would have to agree with every one of them, but it is very hard to find any smart, successful business person to, to read those credos and not say, wow, this is very well-documented wisdom. Okay, now, Dave, out of all of the impact that these, you know, credos have had on myself, on other people, on other clients, um, there's really a point why you've written them all down and you've developed this philosophy because you have a much bigger picture of what your life is about and what you'd like to do, and I want to give you an opportunity to kind of tie both of them together. So what is it that you'd really like to talk about on this interview and, and what credos are the most important to you because we certainly can't cover all of them? 
Well, they're all important to me, obviously, and a lot of them point and pertain to different parts or different portions of, of your life or my life. But I did go through and pick out 10 that have a direct bearing on what I want to talk about a little more today about life extension after we go through the credos and how they pertain to health and life extension. And uh, the first one is number two. And uh, that one, uh, and if you don't mind, I'll just read it, Joe, and then... Uh, no, no, you read it or I'll read it or you do whatever you want. I mean, that's... Okay, awesome. well, uh, why don't you, you have it in front of you? Yes, I do. Why don't you read number two and then I'll elaborate. Okay, hey, I won't even interview. I'll just sit here, sit here and read and then you give elaboration and I'll... I'll be like the train seal during this. Yeah, but it'll be good. That's fine. All right, number two. I, and by the way, I always have these in front of me. I mean, this is the most important document that, that I always have laying around. Number two, cherish time, your most valuable resource. You can never make up for the time you lose. It's the most important value for any productive, happy individual and is the only limitation to all accomplishment. To waste time is to waste your life. The most important choices you'll ever make are how you use your time. Okay, I'd like to make a couple of comments. and I'm not going to go into a long elaboration on any individual credo. What I'm going to do is say how, how these particular ones pertain to health and longevity. Okay. And uh, when I wrote this credo, it was gosh, that had to be back in the 80s. I said you can never make up the time you lose. Well, that might not always be the case. Right now you can't. Well, maybe you can. Uh, I take, I take that back because I'm going to talk about some ways where we can actually add some more time to your life. But basically, we have a finite lifespan, and there's nothing more valuable and more cherished and more limited than time. And the most important choices you ever make are how you use your time. I'm going to talk about how I'm using my time. Uh, I think that everybody should sit back and try to evaluate if they're using their time the most efficiently and effectively because uh, when you're young, uh, it seems like you have all the time in the world. As I, as I said today, I'm almost 63, and um, I just know that I don't have as much time left as I did. You know, the actuaries tell me that, that I don't have as much time left as I did when I was in my 20s, 30s, and 40s. Sometimes it, I almost become panic-stricken in knowing that I, have, I just have so much time to accomplish what I need to accomplish. And I'll talk about a little bit what I want to accomplish later on. But uh, let's move on to number 21. That's it, because I've got all the credos here, so just give me a number and I'll, I'll, I'll read it. All right, number 21. Always have lofty, explicit goals and visualize them intensely. Assume the attitude that if you don't reach your goals, you will literally die. This type of gun-to-your-head, forced focus, survival pressure mindset, no matter how briefly used, stimulates your mind, forces you to use your time effectively, and illuminates new ways of getting things done. Uh, when I wrote this, I had um, I didn't have the goals that I have now, and the second sentence in this credo assume the attitude that if you don't reach your goals, you will literally die. If I don't reach the goals I'm going to talk about later on, I will die, and so will you, and we will die before our time. So this is a very very important credo to me. Thinking that when you when you have this gun to your head, forced focus. Uh, it does eliminate new ways of, think, of getting things done, and I have come up with a couple of ways that I don't think I ever would have come up with before uh, without this pressure, survival pressure on me, and these are a couple of uh, financial models or financial instruments that I hope will be able to, and I think will be able to, have me raise all the money that we need to accomplish the financial goals that I have, and those are related to raising money for life extension research. I also use this credo, I mean, not consciously, but use this credo, this pressure to put together a bunch of scientists over three international scientific conferences. And uh, we came up with a scientific roadmap, and it was a very innovative roadmap to control the aging process and to someday reverse aging. So this stuff works. You just have to put it to work for you, whatever your goal is. So let's move on to uh, number 26. Okay, number 26. Well, this is a great one. Well, they're all great, but this one is especially good. Uh, 26, religiously nourish your body with proper nutrition, exercise, recreation, sleep, and relaxation techniques. I am going to talk a lot about this, and I'm going to elaborate on number 26 during the discussion after we get past the credos. Okay. So just, just say that just wait for the information I'll be giving you. Okay. Next. Which one would you like me to? Uh, 33. 33. Okay. If the situation is not right in the long term, walk away from it. Maintain a long-term outlook in all endeavors. Live like you don't have much time left, but plan as if you'll live for centuries. I think that's uh, good advice for anybody. 
Um, live like you don't have much time left. Basically, get a sense of urgency in whatever you're doing in life, whatever is important to you. But make long-term plans, long-range plans. Uh, the Japanese are very good at this. They have corporate plans that go out for centuries. Uh, in the U.S., we tend to focus on the um, quarterly results. But they have long-term plans. Uh, they're long-term planners, and so should you be. Plan as though you'll live for centuries. When I wrote that, again, back in the 80s, oh, it, it was a nice dream. Yeah, but some of the people that are listening to this interview right now literally might have the opportunity to live for centuries, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you decide for yourself after we talk. Let's go to number 35. Okay. Uh, well, let me just preface that by saying that, uh, you know, I've hung around you for quite a long time, and some people right now be like, what is he talking about? But I can I can only uh, tell you that Dave is a very sane individual and has a, an enormous amount of insight. I mean, you know, it's funny, Dave, is uh, we, did a, we did a session over your house, uh, I don't know, about a year and a half ago, and we had some real players there. Bill Phillips actually spent the whole day there kind of listening, and one of your scientists that you had gathered together, you know, not too long ago, he was on uh, he was on 2020, and uh, scientists from uh, the UK, Aubrey. What's, that was what's... Aubrey de Grey. He was on 2020. He was recently on 60 Minutes, and he's been on basically um, uh, featured on in every major newspaper, magazine, and television news show in the world, uh, English in the English speaking world anyway. Um, he's got a tremendous amount of credibility, and if you think I'm nuts, uh, listen to him talk. <laughs> okay, number 35, you said? 35. Okay. Stress kills. No matter how painful in the short term, remove all chronically stressful situations, environments, and people from your life. Great. The reason I want you to talk about this one or want to talk about this one is, I don't know if you're going to be living for centuries, Joe, or anybody listening on this, but you, 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 you make up your own, your own minds after we uh, finish this interview. But um, however long you're going to live, you're going to shorten your life and you're, you're going to ruin your health if you subject yourself to chronic stress. Stress might be the number one killer out there. Chronic stress, I'm talking about the things that you worry about day in and day out, and you know what they are, and we all have those from time to time at least, some of us more than others. Identify what they are. Get them out of your life because they're going to kill you. They're going to kill your relationships, they're going to ruin your health, and they're eventually going to physically kill you. If that means changing jobs or changing businesses or selling your business or at least coping, learning how to cope with your or handle or manage your stress and keeping those situations in your life. If it means moving to another area, whatever it takes, do it because I guarantee whatever you're doing that is causing that stress is not worth your life. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, stress management uh, later on. Okay, great. Okay, let's, let's go to number 40, Joe. Number 40, no dream is too big. It takes almost the same amount of time and energy to manage tiny projects or businesses as it does to manage massive ones, and the massive ones carry with them proportional rewards. Uh, the reason I threw that one in is the challenge I'm taking on now is gigantic compared to anything that I've ever done in my life. If we are able to pull off what we're trying to pull off, it is going to literally be a world-changing event. Hopefully, we will pull it off and we'll think of even bigger challenges. But right now, it's major and it's huge. And i got to tell you, it's not taking up any more of my time or energy than any of the projects, large or small, that I've ever handled in my life, and especially the smaller ones. In fact, it takes, in a lot of ways, less energy because of the enthusiasm and motivation I have for, for doing something that I uh, know has a great impact and something that I really enjoy doing. So... Whatever you're doing, uh, whatever your dream is, it doesn't have to be a world-changing event. It might just be uh, something like being the, the biggest carpet cleaner on the block or the best mom or dad in the neighborhood or in the town or in the state. Whatever your dream is, think about making it bigger. And you know you can do it. I know you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go to number 55, Joe. All right, number 55. Um, you know, I've read all these credos, Dave, uh, probably in the thousands of times. Um, you know, as many times as I've read these over the years, but this is one of my favorites. 55, uh, enjoy life. Treat it as an adventure. Care passionately about the outcome, but keep it in perspective. Things are seldom as bleak as they seem when they are going wrong or as good as they seem when they are going well. Lighten up. You'll live longer. Uh, again, that kind of relates a little bit to stress. Most people take themselves and their situations way too seriously. If you step back and look at your situation or problem, and if you make it a part of somebody else's life, or at least pretend to, 
it suddenly diminishes in importance. Uh, we, we tend to really overblow the things that we do, good or bad. You know, in the grand scheme of things, we're all important um, because we're individual human beings. But in the grand scheme of things, uh, if you're getting your mortgage paid on time, if you're a little bit, if you're having a little bit of a financial problem or business problem, uh, a, a personal relationship, you know, you're just one of thousands, millions, or even billions of people that are having similar problems. Take these problems and treat them as adventures. Treat them as something, a situation that you can manage or a challenge. When things go wrong, they're really usually magnified in your own mind. Uh, we tend to focus on the bad things, and they're really not, they're hardly ever. Sometimes they're, you know, if they're obviously life-threatening or whatever, they're, they're very serious, but typically they're not. In fact, hardly ever are they that bad. And they're, they're just not as bad as you think. And on the flip side of it, when things are going really well, some people just let it go to their head. They get cocky, they get arrogant, they get impossible to live with. And um, you know what? You're just as good as your last deal, uh, but you're really just as good as the, as the person and character that you are. Uh, don't get uh, all blown up with self-importance. Lighten up. You'll live longer, and everything we're going to be talking about today is helping and helping making you live longer. All right. Great. Excellent. Couldn't agree more. Uh, what's the next one? Number 84. 84. Nobody gets old by surprise. Well, we all know that we are born, we mature, we age, and we get old. And things ain't pretty when you get old sometimes or most of the time. Physically, you lose a lot. Mentally, you lose a lot. Uh, you don't have the energy, and, of course, you don't have as long a lifespan ahead of you. And we all know that um, if we save money when we're young, uh, the chances are, and if we invest wisely, we're going to be financially comfortable when we're old. We all know that uh, if something should happen to us, we're better off covered by insurance than if, than if we're not. In fact, if we're not, it could be devastating to us. Um, yet most of us don't prevent, they don't, don't, we don't plan for the future. And suddenly people wake up and they're old and they're unprepared and they're sick and they're un underinsured or they're, they have no bank account. They, um, they have no net worth. And they panic. And getting old is not a surprise. Getting old is a part of life. And it's just a way, uh, another way of saying plan for your future and plan accordingly uh, because it actually comes up and sneaks up on you a lot quicker than you might think. It seems like a surprise sometimes, but it really isn't. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's go to 92. 92. Put the magic power of compound interest to work with every available dollar. I'm going to talk a little bit about that if you leave me any time. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, you always got to give me a hard time, don't you, Dave? Of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I first interviewed you, you were really nice because you know we were, you know, we were. I didn't know you then. No, I know. Yeah. So that that now you could just uh, you you can bust on me a little. No, you're, right. you're. I know. I wouldn't do it if I know. And, and actually, I'm being very. We're both being very kind to each other right now, a lot more than we do uh, personally. But, uh, <laughs> I know you have a, you have a, a very strong ego, and you can. You, know, you, can, you can take a lot of abuse. Of course, absolutely. You know what? It's 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 all it's all in fun. So it's true. all right. So I will leave you some time to talk about making money because uh, certainly you know there's people say money isn't important. There's some song I can't remember what's called, but it says you say money isn't everything. I'd like to see you live without it. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, and it's it's true. So in the right context, money is critical. Um, all right. What's the next credo you'd like me to? Well, talk about? I just want to say that um, it it not only is money. But I'm going to show you how investing your time can actually give you more time. It's the same, it's the same concept as we're used to seeing with compound interest, but we're going to be talking about how you can use your time effectively and invest your time in certain things like your own personal life extension. Okay. And let's finish up with the last one, number 100. Number 100. Uh, the purpose of life is to delay, avoid, and eventually reverse death. And this is the crux of everything I'm trying to do in my life. Uh, we're going to be talking today how you can delay death. How we can another another and more gentle and kinder way of saying it is how you can expand or extend your healthy lifespan. Uh, avoiding death, well, that's a huge challenge, of course. 
and uh, that's something a little bit farther out, uh, if, if it's possible at all. And reversing death is really uh, the ultimate challenge to um, science, I, I would think. Uh, basically, um, reversing death, and are you familiar with the term entropy, Joe? Yes. Well, entropy is really, um, it's disorder out of order. Everything deteriorates. Um, you know, you can see uh, our bodies deteriorate as we get older. Uh, if you take a, a good description of it is if you take a, a good visual is if you take a, uh, an artichoke before you eat it, you know, it's a nice symmetrical piece of, you know, it's a vegetable. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after it's all finished, it's just, you know, it's a horrible mess. You've got these leaves flying all over the place, and it's just, you know. Now, how often do you eat artichokes, Dave? Come on. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but another way of putting it is you can see how metal rusts. And, and, uh, and But the same thing happens to diamonds. I mean, if you give it long enough, every, everything deteriorates. Right. And, uh, but the purpose of life is to delay, avoid, and reverse death. Every, to me, this is a, a no-brainer purpose of life because it's observable. Every life form fights for survival. Everyone. If you, you, I can't think of one that doesn't. Animals in the wild are fighting to, to keep from being eaten. You have blades of grass and weeds and flowers fighting their way and cracking through concrete just to get the sunlight. You have brute force, you know, animals in the wild uh, fighting to survive. And, and uh, human beings hopefully are a little bit more intellectually inclined and we use our brains more for uh, survival. But what we're going to be talking about today is the uh, fight to survive uh, intellectually and how we can do the things, use our brains to increase our lifespan. So um, if it's okay now, Joe, let's go into what I want to talk about. And uh, I'd like to just talk about how, how anybody here, prob almost everybody listening to this, can add 5 to 20 healthful, youthful years to their lives. And I'm also going to talk about how you can double your net worth. If you'll give me a heads up, Joe, when we have about 5 or 10 minutes left, you know, I'll, I'll give a summary. But... Um, if we don't finish up what I'd like to talk about as far as health and longevity, uh, click on maxlife.org and go to um, SALADS, S-A-L-A-D-S. You'll see uh, uh, some buttons at the top of the bar, at the top of the uh, page, and under publications, you go to SALADS. And uh, that'll give a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today, but not all. Basically, that'll tell you the things you can do right now today and um, that will add possibly 5 to 20 years to your life depending on your age, your current age, and depending on your physical condition. Now, SALADS isn't what you're going to find in a salad bar. Uh, SALADS is an acronym, and it's, it stands for Supplementation, S, A, Activity, L, Lifestyle, A, Anti-Aging Medicine, D stands for Diet, and S, we talked about earlier, stands for Stress Management. And um, the, the years that we, the salads will add to your life will be not just more quantity, but you'll be adding more quality to your life, a lot more quality. Now, what does healthy mean? When I say healthy, I don't mean you're not sick or you're in pretty good shape for your age. Healthy means you look and feel extraordinary. Your organs operate at peak performance. Your immune system is strong. It's resilient. It doesn't matter what your age is. Now, the normal person isn't really healthy at all. It doesn't matter what age. The average normal person is not very healthy. We're shooting for you where you can be 70 years old, but you function like you're, say, 50. Or if you're 60, you can function like you're 40 and so forth, and to look way younger than you actually are. Now, I'll be saying some things here, Joe, especially toward the end of this, if I have time, that are contrary to things that we were taught all our lives. But... We live in different times, and uh, things change faster every day, and I'm going to talk a lot about that as well. And I'm going to show you the how, where, when, and why all these things are going to happen and why they're happening now and, and faster and faster. Well, then what I would say is I won't even try to interject questions unless I just feel it's really important. Just go ahead and, and talk because I know it's uh, quite interesting, <laughs> everything you have to say. And, you know, let, for anyone that may have this belief in their minds of, well, you know, I mean, this is, uh, you know, contrary to something I believe in or whatever, I, I completely agree with what you said about as just life in general, we're striving on all levels from the animal kingdom to the human kingdom to the, you know, plant, 
kingdom uh, to just survive and to live and to thrive in all kinds of different environments. And if you look on television as an example, reality shows built around, you know, plastic surgery and all of the crazy things that people attempt to do to make themselves look better or like an artificial way of thinking that they're going to be younger versus really doing the things that you have been practicing your whole life and, and literally have devoted your, your life to 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 developing and to getting out there uh, in healthy ways and ways to actually take care of this wonderful thing we have called life and to to get the most out of it that's really critical so anyone that would have controversial opinions i think in a lot of ways we live in a very sick and twisted uh you know delusional way of looking at aging in general and i could go into that but anyway just go ahead and give your insights on it well most people won't have a controversial opinion about some of the things as far as lifestyle is concerned what they might have a controversial opinion is it's the technology that's going to be taking us into the future and it's going to give us more and more years. But there's a technology revolution underway right now. And it's a revolution that can affect you in ways you might never have imagined. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about lifestyle habits. And um, again, you can go to maxlife.org and get a lot of this. But um, I, want to, I want to just say that most, most of your chronic diseases are due to lifestyle factors. Many of them are due to genetic factors, but most aren't. For example, we have about 71% of colon cancers are totally avoidable. About 91% of all diabetes cases and about 82% of heart cases, uh, heart disease, are avoidable. And salads will help you boost you from sick to normal to extraordinary, and extraordinary is where we want to go. And salads are synergistic. Any one of these can help you. Exercise can help you or diet or so forth. But when you take them together, these improvements become exponential. Uh, so in other words, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So this just, you know, don't try to just pick one or two of these things out. They'll be helpful, sure, but try to make all these a part of your life. Step number one is supplementation. And we've all read pros and cons about supplementation. The government recommendations, I think, are extremely conservative, and uh, many researchers are conservative. The industry supplement industry is naturally aggressive they're trying to sell stuff and but ultimately you decide what's best for you I, i'm very pro supplementation and um i for for a number of reasons um one there's so much literature now uh, and supplementation isn't going to extend your maximum lifespan at least well there are a couple of new supplements that have the potential but none are proven to do that yet in humans anyway but uh, we do know out of thousands and thousands and thousands of studies, 50,000, over 50 or 60,000 pages last, or more than that, last I looked, that supplementation can greatly improve and extend your average lifespan by helping you avoid your, lots of diseases. So there's a Dr. Bruce Ames at Cal State Berkeley. He said over 50 genetic diseases have already been identified that can be corrected by aggressive nutritional supplementation. And uh, that's aggressive. That's not RGA and, and, uh, and just diet. This is for optimal health. And optimal health is not possible, according to Dr. Ames, and I believe that's to be 100% true, without supplementation. You know, again, thousands of studies support that. E- even lacking one nutrient can cause major damage. It, it can lead to DNA damage. It uh, can cause cancer and, and so forth and so on. And, you know, most of us are born with genetic defects. Uh, we're not all perfect. In fact, very few of us are genetically, and um, they can only be corrected by take. Some of these can only be corrected by taking mega doses, mega doses now, of appropriate supplements. Supplements can help basically every disease you can think of. Uh, I think the bare basics include a high potency multi uh, vitamin tablet, um, essential fatty acids. Um, gosh, they had I think uh, almost 100 uh, trials involving over you know, hundreds of thousands of subjects, they show that uh, omega-3 fatty acids like fish oil reduce cardiac mortality risk by 32% and overall mortality by 23%. Now, if, it's, you know, if you don't do anything else, go out and get a good high-quality fish oil supplement and take it every day. I mean, that's, that's, that's a cheap, easy way to help buy health and longevity. And then you have things like CoQ10 and so forth and so on. But rather than me go, going through these um, different supplements, you can go to the website and you can get an idea of, uh, of what I'd recommend. We have, there's a process called methylation. It's a chemical reaction, and it takes place millions of times in every single cell of your body. You've got trillions of cells, you know, tens of trillions of cells in your body. 
And your body depends on this biochemical exchange for some of its most uh, most important, most critical functions, and those include detoxifying uh, carcinogens and other poisons, repairing damaged DNA, uh, forming new cells, you know, manufacturing anti-aging hormones. And if your body doesn't methylate properly, you're going to uh, head right down toward the path for you know, accelerated aging, and I think most of us are down that path now, uh, heart disease, Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, other things. And it's easy to improve this with supplementation. You don't have to be too aggressive to uh, get major benefits. You can take, uh, you know, take a high-quality protein powder, flaxseed oil, olive oil, things like that. Uh, but just, just to give you one, one example of what supplementation can do for you, I get most of my, almost all of my, uh, and I do not have a vested interest in this, but I get most of my supplements from the Life Extension Foundation. I think they're wonderful people and they have great products and they uh, donate most of their, pro pro uh, their uh, profits to Life Extension Research. And you can go to their website at uh, lef.org, O-R-G, LEF, Life Extension, Extension Foundation. Uh, step two in uh, salads is uh, activity or regular exercise. And exercise reduces disease and death dramatically for all major progressive diseases. And again, that includes heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and so forth. And uh, they had a study involving uh, over 13,000 participants. And the overall death rate, this is for moderate exercises, just moderate, was 60% less in the sedentary group. And the high fitness group scored much higher than that. So uh, what you want to do is start with your toe in the water, get under a doctor's supervision, especially if you're over 40 years old, uh, get some of the stuff that Bill Phillips puts out. Um, you know, John Benson has some great stuff. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there that have some great things. Uh, but certainly exercise, uh, get cardio, and uh, cardio is very, very important. Um, what I do rather than, and I found it for uh, cardio health, rather than long, steady, uh, low to medium intensity effort, which I used to do, uh, jogging, for example, and then some things that I do uh, in my wheelchair. Right now what I'm doing is I'm training uh, for about 20 minutes for my cardio uh, workouts, and I do interval training. And interval training can burn up to nine times more fat than sustained uh, medium intensity exercise. So uh, what I suggest you do if you want to do this is uh, I have a hand uh, stationary hand bicycle, which I use, but you can do sprints. Uh, you can uh, you get on a bicycle stationary or, or regular bicycle, uh, swimming or whatever. But uh, get, go through a two, or two to five minute warm up routine, and then do one to two minute spurts at about 80 to 90 percent of your capacity. And once you achieve a good, that's you know, when, that's once you uh, get up to a good fitness level, you want to work up to that. And uh, then go through a recovery uh, of one to two minutes at about 40 to 50 percent of your capacity. And continue that cycle. And it only takes about 20 minutes. You do this for, you know, three, four, five, six days a week. Uh, if you prefer a longer, drawn-out aerobic exercise, you, you can do those too. But the, the important thing to do is get moving. You know, do something and make it a regular part of your life. Um, anaerobic exercise resistance or uh, strength training. Again, I would get information that Bill Phillips puts out or uh, any, any number of people. Joe, you have a lot of uh, good contacts in that area. Oh, yeah, you know, and I'm also, in, in, in at the time of this interview, I haven't put a, an enormous amount of focus on it. It is one of my, um, you know, goals is, is a project a few months down is just having a listing of things that I recommend on Lean Life, L-E-A-N-L-I-F-E dot com. But, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of uh, great people. One thing I want to point out, too, Dave, is that, you know, uh, you hear so many excuses about, I don't have time to exercise and all that. And, I mean, you know, someone could always <laughs> Yeah, not, not that this is maybe the greatest example in the world, but the point is, if you can fit it in with the challenges that you have in the limited amount of activities that you can do versus, I mean, you can't get up and go for a walk in the morning. I mean, you, you, you can't. You haven't been able to do that for over 25 years. And we've got so many things available to us, and people make excuses. Well, I don't have time to exercise. I'm too busy. And, you know, if you don't take the time to take care of yourself, uh, life is going to, you know, take the time out for you in the future with sickness and illness and death. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's critical. Absolutely. Absolutely. You make your time. You put it into your schedule just like you have uh, brushing your teeth in your schedule or eating lunch. I mean, it's just part of your schedule. And the ironic thing is, Joe, if, if you take the time and uh, to exercise, and it doesn't take a lot of your time. I'm saying cardio, maybe 20 minutes a day. I mean, you can do uh, a great... Uh, you know, weight training workout in, in 45 minutes or less. 
uh, depending on what your goals are, you can get, actually do some pretty serious bodybuilding in 45 minutes, uh, you know, 45 minute sessions. And these things uh, it just really add more years to your life. They add more life to your years. Uh, they give you, uh, they, they make you more relaxed when you're not working out. They, you get, you sleep better. And you might, lead, you know, you might need less sleep. You certainly get better sleep. You have more energy. And um, when these things happen, you find you have a better capacity and a bigger capacity to do the things that you say keep you from working out in the first place. So working out really enhances those things that you use, use as, as excuses to work out. Yeah, no, I believe working out doesn't take time. I actually believe it, it, it makes time because you feel better all the way around. You're more efficient. You're more effective. You think clear. I mean, the benefits, uh, so far outweigh, you know, whatever sort of effort. And, you know, I can't, I'm not one of these people that say, oh, I love going to the gym. It just makes, you know, I mean, I do it because I like the results of what it does. And, uh, I can't imagine living any other way and not doing that physically so you know i mean it, it, it's a lot easier to maintain momentum than it is to create it so the point being is you know taking the time to have physical activity in your life is just crucial and the results uh will far outweigh um you know the the effort that you may have to exert it's 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 one of the most important things i think it is actually the most important thing um to take care of yourself physically because it doesn't matter how much money you have um you would do anything to get your health back if you lost your health so activity sure is critical and the benefits of just working out we could talk about those for the next 20 minutes i mean one after another it just improves sexual function more energy it goes on and on and on and on and on you know in one pound of muscle i don't know if you knew this joe but one pound of muscle takes as much space as five pounds of fat i mean it just, well, you look so much better i mean uh, you can even gain weight and and still look better when you're working out so um uh, anyway i you can exercise you know we talked about exercising your body but Exercising your brain is just as important, and I know you're a reader and you're a thinker and, and carry these, these habits through the rest of your life, but there are lots of things you can do to exercise your brain that can be fun. If you're a chess player, play chess, or if you're not, you might want to take it up, uh, any kind of challenging mental game, uh, crossword puzzles, reading, problem solving, all these things, problem solving in your business and personal life. Keep your mind active. So uh, it, it just... It, it, it just uh, slows your aging process down and makes you much more efficient, much more happier, and much more healthier. Yeah. Oh, well, one thing I want to say, there was, there was a, a recent study at the University of Wisconsin, and this is incredible to me. If, if you start early enough in life, this study showed that diet and exercise alone, just diet and exercise, can increase the average lifespan, which today is late 70s, you know, almost 80, to over 100 years. At what age? I mean, is it? Well, is, if you make it a life, life, lifelong habit, the later you start, the less extra years you're going to add. But the point is, if, if the people in this world or this country would live a healthy lifespan, just grow up and just you know exercise properly and 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 have, have the right diet, they're going to be adding over 20 years to the average lifespan. Just just those two habits. Well, there you go. Yeah, and then there's uh, step number three: lifestyle in salads. Uh, that's risk avoidance, uh, personal habits, and one of these things uh, is a, uh, can, a risk of uh, personal habits is what you do to get fat. Um, being overweight, you know that's a cancer risk factor? Yeah. Obesity or just being overweight, not even obesity, accounts for 20% of the cancer deaths in women and 14% in men. Wow. And one-third of American adults are obese. Obese people die seven years earlier than normal weight adults. The more people weigh, the less you're going to live. And, the, and their cells appear older. If you look at a molecular level, uh, uh, you know, under a microscope, and you look at these people's cells, the obesity adds the equivalent of about nine years of age to a person's body. So now you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and then, of course, smoking. And, you know, we, smokers die about eight years sooner than non-smokers. Um, you know, some people think it's cool, and some people think it's a habit they can't break. But, you know, break that habit. Fifty uh, percent of smokers were eventually killed by their habits. So it's well, I mean, my father was one of them. He actually, you know, and I, I look, I look at smoking and, and, and many things. You know, there's there's the habit part, which some people can't control. Then there's the whole addiction aspect of it, which is a whole other animal, which is, you know ties in the psychological thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. know. But for the most part, uh, yeah, I, you know, I watched my father uh, um, as a result of uh, this of smoking. He, he, you know, it caused him to die, and it's unfortunate because we have. 
We have lots of uh, food companies and tobacco companies and uh, things that make big profits that uh, want to um, make it uh, appear like a very cool thing to do to consume their products, which are really just poisoning your body. And so, you know, the the the, the great thing we have those we have the, we have options, and uh, you know we can uh, decide. Um, you know, where we want to spend our time, what type of an environment we want to, you know, if you want a healthy environment at your house, get rid of all the junk food. Don't hang yeah. out at yeah. smoky bars. You know, I mean, um, set up something that's conducive for a uh, very healthy lifestyle. Well, you got that right, Joe. Um, I can't I can't agree more. So the uh, the, the next... Uh, the next, the next, next one is, let's go step four, anti-aging medicine. Now, I, I'm not a doctor, obviously, and I, I'm not qualified to give you medical advice, but... I don't even want to suggest dosages for supplements or whatever. You can find general guidelines on our site and the uh, Life Extension Foundation site. But one thing that I will say is we're all physiologically unique. Uh, you know, one size doesn't fit all for anything. And for optimal health, what I suggest you do is see a qualified anti-aging physician. There's a specialty, and there are thousands and thousands of these around the country right now. Most doctors are basically mechanics. They try to fix you when something goes wrong. And anti-aging medicine, it, it, that can fix you too. But more importantly, it's a preventative medicine. It helps ensure that something doesn't go wrong in the first place. And a really good anti-aging specialist is going to keep you from needing a mechanic. And, uh, well, mechanics, I mean, you know, most people take better care of their car than they do of their bodies. Oh, absolutely. So, oh, it's incredible. But uh, if a good anti-aging doctor is going to start with an extensive blood panel, he'll evaluate or she'll evaluate your present condition. They'll establish a baseline for you. They'll uh, rec make all kinds of good recommendations. Uh, colonoscopies, for example, after age 50, um, if uh, you should get a colonoscopy every five to ten years, if this one step alone, just colonoscopies every five or ten years, would reduce your colon cancer death rate. Well, the average, you know, the, the world's, the country's uh, colon cancer death rate by 90 percent. So these are all the kind of things that you should be talking to your doctor about, your anti-aging doctor. Uh, hormone replacement, um, find somebody who really knows what they're doing or hormone levels go down when you get older, uh, restoring them to youthful levels can rejuvenate your body uh, inside, outside, but it's got to be fine-tuned. You just don't go out and start popping all the hormones that you can get on the market, some prescription and, most, and a, lot that are, a lot that aren't. A good anti-aging doctor is going to guide you through these and uh, add these extra years to your life. So um, five diet, uh, that's what I want to get into, Joe. You talked a little bit about that. Uh, I'm going to give you really four simple guidelines. Now, here's one thing I want to stress. You can still follow these and enjoy eating. And uh, I have a book called Eating for Life that Bill Phillips uh, published. It's excellent uh, recipes in there. And they're very tasty and they're very healthy. And if you follow these guidelines that I'm going to uh, give you now, you can still enjoy eating. And if you like to eat, listen to this, you should have extra incentive to live longer because if you add only five years to your life, that means you get to eat at least 5,500 more meals if you eat three times a day. So you like to eat? Don't use that, 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 should, that should be a big incentive, incentive for a lot of people. Yeah, don't use, don't, use, <laughs> don't, don't use being liking to eat you know, as an excuse for not eating well. I mean, that should be the, it should be the opposite. But um, step one in diet is stay away from sugar and refined carbohydrates. These are among the most dangerous foods you can eat. They rob you of life. They rob you of vitality. They age you faster than anything you might put in your body, uh, even, even cigarette smoke. Now, that includes anything made with white flour and sugar. And the reason they hurt you is they're very quickly digested and absorbed, and they, they set off a chain reaction in your body. You, you get a sudden rise in blood sugar, and it tr triggers a, there's a sudden release of insulin from your pancreas, and you know, that's released to take the sugar out of your blood and into your cells, and then it, you know, that causes excess sugar to be converted to fat. And you know, Anyway, it's a long chain of, of, um, of events, but if you want to lose weight, you just stay away from flour and sugar. And, um, you know, also insulin does a lot of other bad things for you. The inflammation and glycation. Uh, inflammation is uh, one of the biggest killers, one of the biggest causes of aging. And it's, inflammation is basically a defensive reaction to infections, uh, toxins, injury. Uh, you know, if you, if you cut yourself or, you know, you see the swelling around the cut or a sprain or a mosquito bite, those, that's uh, inflammation and that's your body rushing to fix yourself. But inflammation also happens insidiously inside our bodies 
and reducing it to systemic inflation or chronic inflation, if you reduce that, it can, it can slash your chances of heart disease and cancer in half. Inflation might be the key to Alzheimer's and other things. And the way to lose, uh, to uh, in decrease inflation or uh, in inflammation. Yeah, you, keep say, you keep saying inflation versus inflammation, I'm but, you know, they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of similar. Yeah, they're, they're kind of similar. They sure are, yeah. <laughs> but if you want to control inflammation, the main thing is to lose weight and exercise more. Those are the two things we talked about, and that's one reason why those two might uh, lengthen your life so much. Uh, reducing stress. Uh, I want to cut back on red meat and egg yolks. And you know, egg yolks, you know, occasionally are okay, but not too many. Well, let me ask you a question, because you talked about sugar and stuff. Um, you know, you're, you're good friends, and so am I, with uh, Joe Sugarman. Yes. Uh, and, you know, he, li he lives in Maui, Hawaii, and when you, you know, I've, I've actually been to this place uh, several times, uh, yeah. beautiful out there. And, I'll, like, I'll tell you, you to stay away from, from him because... You know, Joe, no, 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 not, not stay away from Joe Sugarman, but, <laughs> you know, I never even put the two together until just now, but sugar. <laughs> but when you fly into Maui, uh, in yeah. Hawaii, where he lives, well, um, you drive through all those sugar fields, and so I know oh. that you would... Yeah, yeah, I know that you and Joe are doing a lot of stuff. So the next time, and, he'll, and Joe, of course, listens to these interviews. So I think that uh, you should maybe tell him he needs to do something about all the sugar production in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sugar, that is so funny. Anyway, he, let, let me not ruin this interview here. So you continue on. I'll just try to shut up over here. Okay. <laughs> well, now, glycation it, uh, is, is something you really want to uh, control to the best of your ability. Glycation is a chain reaction, and that's where sugar and protein molecules, just one reason sugar is so bad for you, uh, sugar and protein molecules tangle up, and the result is deformed or non-functioning molecules. Now, you've seen old leather, you know how it cracks. Right. That's molecular cross-linking. And the same thing happens to our skin. As we get older, we see our skin you know, getting wrinkly and cracking and drying out and so forth. What we can't see is the damage it does to us internally. The same thing that's happening to us externally is happening to us internally. And they damage your immune system. They promote disease. and Inflammation does as well. So um, one way to, to help these is to stay away from refined foods. Um, Low-fat uh, foods are usually, you know, high in sugar. Right. Uh, whole grain foods and fresh fruit, and they have more fiber, and they're converted to sugars more gradually. So, um, you know, learn how to control your inflammation and glycation. And um, there are also some uh, supplements and uh, drugs that are being developed right, right now to hopefully break up some of this cross-linking, this, you know, that's, that's caused by uh, glycation. Uh, but they're not really not on the market yet. There might be one on the market fairly soon, in fact, one that we're working on uh, as a company ourselves. You want to eat more lean protein, especially from plant foods, if, if possible. Uh, plants have about one-seventh the contaminants of animal products, but uh, whichever way, eat about six quality uh, servings of protein per day, plus soy and whey and egg protein powder. That's, that's, you get a high-quality whey or uh, egg protein powder, mix a little bit of soy in there maybe once in a while, too. And uh, eat fish at least three times per, uh, per week. Um, skinless poultry breast is a good second choice. Uh, occasional high, you know, high quality red meat if you like once in a while. I personally prefer uh, ostrich for my red meat, but um, generally red meat is not a good thing to make it a habit of ha habit of eating. Replace bad fats with good fats. You, you need fats to absorb many vitamins and have your cells function properly. I mean, you stay away from really low fat diets. They're typically not healthy for you. Uh, they trigger a famine response and they also uh, increase the production of body fat. But um, which, which in turn increases the production of body fat. But you want to get your fats from monounsaturated fats and essential fatty acids. Uh, saturated fats, these are bad fats. They're typically found in meat and dairy products. Uh, they promote heart disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, and whatever. Uh, trans fatty acids are even worse. They're basically unsaturated oils, and they're treated with hydrogen to... Uh, they create an artificial saturated fat, and this is like, you know, they have to be getting heated french fries when, when they're heating or cooking french fries. So you can get some really good fats by uh, eating fresh olives or olive oil, um, avocados, nuts, uh, fish oil, of course. We talked about that. And then uh, eat a wide variety of fresh produce or frozen produce and lots of it. So, uh, you know, grazing, eat lots of smaller meals instead of, a bunch, you know, a few bigger meals, uh, Total intake by calories, I think, should be about 40% uh, protein and 40% complex carbohydrates and about 20% healthy fats, um, roughly. Um, 
you might consider lowering fat and carb consumption slightly, and I add a little bit of protein to this formula for personally. But uh, these are good general guidelines. But, you, again, you can go to maxlife.org and, and get a lot of this information. And then uh, stress reduction, we talked about that. Stress causes heart disease, stroke, cancer, Alzheimer's, all kind of stuff. And you should make stress reduction and relaxation a priority in your life. Now, you can do this uh, intentionally with practice, so they're typically much more effective when you do it intentionally than uh, passive relaxation like meditation. You know, so it, the in, intentional or active would be meditation, yoga, breathing exercise, uh, things like that. But other stress reducers are supplementing with uh, things like DHEA and fish oil, vitamin C. There are certain herbs like green tea and ginseng and what have you. Getting eight hours of sleep is very important, uh, un uninterrupted sleep. Um, exercise, major importance for stress, stress reduction. And uh, take regular vacations, which I know you're really good at, Joe. Well, you know, of course. I'm a master of taking vacations. <laughs> Well, now, uh, having said all that, which is very sound, uh, very good advice and has enormous benefits if people follow it, uh, you did mention uh, that you would also talk about how to double your income. So in the time we have left, uh, can you tie that together and then leave us with any, uh, any words of wisdom or direction on top of the fact that uh, the website, one more time, is uh, max, M-A-X, life, dot org. Dot org. Yeah. Well, okay, uh, back to the money. It's always back to the money with you, Joe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I have listeners that, it, that want, they, 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 their whole thing to me is, Joe, show me the money. So, no, mo no money's actually very important. I mean, we, you know, it let, lets us do the things that we want to do in our lives. And, Absol um, absolutely. It, rep it represents freedoms that, it sure you know. Does. And, and it's a measure of uh, business success, if that's your goal. Uh, it's an easy way to measure uh, how you're doing in business. But um, what's most important about money is what you do with it, but that's a whole other story. Now, most people grow their portfolios, at least you should be, by about 10% or more annually. And, and I hope you are because the S&P 500 has, a story, has a, an historical average annual growth of over, 30, over 11%. I think it's about 11.3%. So if you think it's reasonable to expect your portfolio to grow at least 10% a year going forward. Uh, would you say that's reasonable in your case, Joe? Absolutely. Because I know you have some pretty good financial advice. Yeah. Okay, well, here's some really good news for you. If you follow salads, you'll be happier and healthier, of course. We talked about that. You're going to look and feel better, and you'll have extra years to enjoy not only a doubled net worth, but a quadrupled net worth. And here's how. If you extend your healthy lifespan by just 15 years, your net worth will quadruple if it compounded at just 10% a year. Now, that's less than the average investment returns, and that's assuming you never add a penny to your portfolio during that time. So the magic of this is you just live longer. You live longer, and you're going to quad you live 15 years longer, and you're going to quadruple your portfolio. So that's in it in a nutshell. That's my that's, that's all you're going to get on, uh, on making money on this. On how to make, okay, so, well, you know what? It's, it's actually... <laughs> It's, it's actually enormously good advice because if there's, if there's no other reason that, you know, how many people actually pursue so many different ways to try to make money? And, you know, when people downplay the importance of money, I think it's ridiculous because you see people that commit crimes, the most heinous crimes, to make money. And when, there's, when you see a society where they are lacking wealth, um, I mean, it's, it's horrible because so many other things uh, are lacking as a result of it. So, yeah. you know, given the majority of people in, the, you know, the United States and in Canada and various places that will listen to this interview and hear it, I mean, we've, you know, we've got so many, uh, wonderful options available to us and it's, it's really up to us to avail ourselves of all the great things that are out there. So, in well, terms so of wrap. Let me interrupt you just for a minute. If we have a couple of minutes, I have a few more minutes of things that are actually the most important part to me of what we're going to be talking about today. So can I squeeze this in? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Now, I want to talk about extreme life extension. We talked about 5 to 20 years, but I'm going to show you how we have the possibility of adding a whole lot more. Now, how can we do that in light of the fact that we haven't been, been even been able to cure cancer? After, you know, we've been, we spent hundreds of billions of dollars over several decades, but here's the answer to that. In the modern era, our knowledge has been advancing by leaps and bounds compared to most of human history. Now, scientific knowledge doubled from the year 1 A.D. to 1500 A.D. It was the first doubling. It took 1500 years. But by 1967, it doubled five more times, 
and each time it doubled faster than before. It doubles now in much less than 10 years, Joe, and that means in the next eight years or so, we are going to progress and we're going to learn as much as we did from the beginning of recorded history. And part of the reason of this is supercomputers. We're doing things like uh, some of these computers are doing experiments in 15 seconds that you, in biotech that used to take years. And we have new research tools called gene chips that you might have heard of, uh, several years old now or more. And they can do some tissue studies in hours or even minutes that used to take years of animal studies or even studies that couldn't be done at all. And these, G, these chips are like laboratories on a chip. I had a, if we had more time, I'd talk about a really interesting tour I had of a lab uh, yesterday. But do you know who Ray Kurzweil is? Uh, unfortunately, I do not. Ray is one of the world's leading inventors and thinkers and futurists, and he's an incredibly brilliant man. He's uh, gotten you know, international awards for his um, – and he's, he's, he's actually developed things like the, scan, the optical scanner and things like that that we all use in fact. Well, how, how would I know that guy? I don't know any brilliant people, Dave. <laughs> well, <no. laughs> but, but he, he made an observation. He's one of the foremost futurists, uh, but he's a very credible futurist, maybe the most credible in the world. And he observed that the rate of change itself is accelerating, and this is the key. This means the past is not a reliable guide to the future. Now, the 20th century wasn't 100 years of progress at today's rate. It wasn't linear. It was actually equivalent to about 20 years. That's a, well, at today's rate, say the, that was the rate around the year 2000. Because we've been speeding up to current rates of change, and we're going to make another 20 years of progress at the year 2000 rate, and that's equivalent to the entire 20th century. We'll make that, that much progress by the year 2014. Then we're going to do it again by 2021. And because this is exponential, the exponential growth, the 21st century is projected to achieve 20,000 years of progress at the rate of progress that we saw in 2000, or 1,000 times greater than what we witnessed in the 20th century. Now, the 20th century was no slouch. I mean, that was a mind-boggling century of growth. Now, you're probably aware that the power of technology per dollar, you might not be, but the power of technology per dollar now doubles about every 12 months. And that means the tools we use right now and will be using in 10 years, and these are the tools to solve these aging problems and other problems as well, can be a 1,000 times more powerful. And in 20 years, a million times, and in 30 years, a billion times more powerful than, than we're using today. I mean, that's just an incredibly mind-blowing concept. Now, just think and let this sink in for a moment. The entire 20th century, look back on the entire 20th century and mentally calculate what 1,000 times more progress would equate to. Now, try to imagine what effect having tools a billion times more powerful, a billion times, could have on you and your well-being, on your business, on everything. It's an incredible, world-changing concept. It's going to impact, Joe, it's going to imp impact you and me and everybody listening to this. It's going to impact us more than anything we've ever experienced in our lives. All these old rules, almost all of them, and restrictions, they're almost all tossed out. I mean, this, this makes Star Trek and these things look, look tame. I mean, it's just going to be incredible. And, and these are some of the reasons. The law of accelerating returns, this is really what it's all about. And these are some of the reasons why there's going to be dramatic interventions in the aging process in the near future. And that's why you have a chance to benefit. We're making progress faster, better, cheaper. Uh, it's going at a continually accelerating rate, as I said. And then when we add nanotechnology to that, do you know, are you familiar with nanotech, Joe? Yes. Okay, nanotech is basically manipulation uh, of, um, you know, building on the atomic level or the molecular level. Uh, but, well, you know, and I, I would be, of course, not familiar probably with it at all at the level that I am had it not been for you and sitting around with conversations with all your scientists uh, that I have had a, uh, an opportunity right. you to were do. In that, the conference and, and some other discussions we had. And nanotech could eventually build or repair almost every single cell in your body from the bottom up, atom by atom, and it promises to give us complete control of matter at a very efficient way to cure aging damage. Injuries, diseases, you name it, it's going to fix it if we have enough time, if we can hang around long enough to do this. Now, I'm going to go back just for a minute to salads. And the information I gave you to add five years, six years, ten years, maybe even 20 years to your life just by using today's technology and today's know-how, 
could mean more than it would have meant to somebody 50 years ago who would have followed these habits. Why? Because they're going to live, you know, 5 or 10 or 20 more years, but they're still going to die on time, or I call it prematurely. But there's going to be a massive, major breakthrough in anti-aging and life extension technology, Joe, and those extra 5, 10, 15, 20 years might be, even one year maybe, might be all you need to bridge the gap between today's technology and tomorrow's technology. And when we have those technologies, we are going to be able to reverse the human aging process. Are we going to live forever? No, probably not. Accidents are going to you know, still knock us off, wars and things like that, but we'll have ways, hopefully, to minimize that damage. Uh, are we going to have problems? Do we have to, you know, is it going to eliminate all our problems? No. You know, these technologies have flip sides and dark sides to themselves, you know, to them as well as anything else. We have to manage those. But for personal health and longevity and survival, the things you do now are going to increase your chances, open your window of opportunity to take advantage of tomorrow's future technologies, which are going to be absolutely mind-blowing. They are going to change the face of this earth. The, it's going to be bigger than anything we've ever experienced in the whole history of this world. So um, I have more to say, but I think we're out of time. Well, you know, no, you, and it's always mind-expanding to listen to you and stuff. And I've had all kinds of conversations with you. I've played devil's advocate with you a bazillion times on stuff, and unfortunately we don't have all the time in the world to do this. But let me just hit you with one, just... Uh, you know, why would someone want to live forever? What about spirituality? Things like that. And let me preface this by saying I know you address those and I know how you, you know, I know your responses to many of them because we've had these conversations and I think it's uh, very critical that people listen to what it is you've talked about. Um, go to your website if they, if this is interesting to them and they want to inquire more uh, because truthfully, uh, with, without, with having an opinion on something but not researching the person behind it, um, you know, uh, condemning something without investigation is just foolish. So I, I know you have all kinds of thoughts on that. But yeah, let, and I'll but, just give you one closing thought that I'm really not talking about living forever. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about expanding our biological life. Um, I'm talking about having a more or less open-ended biological lifespan. Uh, everything so far in this universe looks like it's, you know, has died or is going to die. It looks like you know, forever is a, a pretty long-term, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, abstract concept, but as far as spirituality is concerned, um, you know, a common thread with all religions in this world is that God represents unlimited and infinite you know, levels of intelligence and knowledge, uh, creativity, beauty, and love, and so forth. We're lo what we're looking at is an evolutionary process, and um, it's also a spiritual process. And it, the difference is that we're starting to control our own evolution. And this spiritual process is basically uh, moving us closer and closer to this ideal that God represents. I mean, uh, I don't see any conflict or uh, most uh, theologians who understand and study some of these technologies don't see any conflict. Some do. Uh, some people do. I don't have an answer for all those people, but I certainly don't. Yeah, and, and you know what, and, and, and most of the people that, that are willing to have opinions without really looking deeper into it are really small-minded individuals anyway. So, you know, there's a group of people that will take, embrace, and uh, do a lot of good with this sort of message and this sort of direction. And so this, of course, the best thing for me to say to kind of wrap up this uh, interview is this will be continued. And, Dave, uh, just one last time, people that uh, really found what you had to say interesting, want more information, please give out your website one more time. Sure, it's maxlife.org. Okay, anything else you recommend or just uh, go there? No, I, Joe, I just want to thank you again for the time and the opportunity to talk with you. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and, I, and, and again, Dave, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you documented the credos. I think, uh, if nothing else, uh, if just going back to the credos, I would highly recommend to all the listeners, just try it. Just, you know, if there's anything that I could encourage you to do that I think would give you enormous value, which is my whole goal here, is to just uh, provide value to my, my listeners, and that's why I'm interviewing uh, you, Dave, because I believe that absolutely you can do that, is to take uh, Dave's uh, credos, read them, uh, every day, try it for the next seven days. If you can do it for a month, uh, just do it. I mean, you can hear me talk about it and think it's a good idea, but really to experience it and to see how that will direct your mind, cause you to have deeper discussions 
and just the amount of business wisdom that is very sound uh, that is contained there, I think will uh, pay you many, many dividends. So I, I appreciate uh, you having spent a very large portion of your life uh, creating those and also what you're doing now um, to, you know, impact the world in the best way that you feel you can. So thank you so much. To- thank you. And here's one more thing I'm hoping your listeners will do, and that's uh, not only practice the credos, but practice salads for two months. Just give it two months, and you can uh, fall off the wagon one day a week or so if you want to do, but start with a complete checkup and get a blood panel, and after two months, get tested again. And if you don't see and feel an amazing difference, Go back to your old habits, but I don't think you will. I think you're going to continue, and you're going to tack on those extra five or 20 years, I promise you. Wonderful, wonderful. And so, yeah, with this will be continued. I do want all my listeners' feedback. Uh, you can go to GeniusNetwork.com for more information. And, uh, Dave, you have an absolutely wonderful day, and we'll talk to everybody later. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Joe. Hello, this is Joe Polish. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this interview. I hope you found it very useful. Please give me your feedback on all of the interviews that you listen to. I'd love to hear your feedback so we can always deliver a great program for you. Our website is www.joepolish.com, and we also have a Joe Polish Recommends section, so you can take a lot of the ideas and concepts that you hear on my Genius Network interview series and apply them to your business and find vendors and resources. You can go to joepolish.com to find that information and click on the Joe Polish Recommends section. And also, if you would like to find out about more interviews and invest in more useful Genius Network series interviews, go to www.joepolish.com. Geniusnetwork.com. Thanks, and eat your competition alive.